Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Here, stringy, 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 string. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I don't know what it is that brought you to today's lesson on here strings, but that's what we're going to cover. Uh, here strings solve a certain edge case that uh, is otherwise a little bit difficult or requires help from a second process. Uh, we'll cover it very briefly today. We have a training VM. Let's get that spun up real quick. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and start the timer on this. So we have a couple of files here and one of them has some data in it. Now most command line programs, especially in the, the GNU family of tools like grep and some of the others on most Linux systems, um, they use very similar f techniques and one of them is the ability to read standard input or files. So in our data file here, I'm just going to use the cat program to spit it out, we have a few lines and I want to get all the lines that say hello. So it doesn't matter if you don't understand the syntax of grep, we'll learn that in another video, but basically I want to run the grep program, look for the word hello in my file called data, and I get what I'm looking for. The problem here is what happens if you don't actually have the data in a file? What if it's stored in a variable somewhere, or if it's the contents actually come from another program, like uh, another process that spit out these lines? That's where here strings can become useful. So let's look at the shell script we have. At the top here I'm creating a variable and I'm going to put the same contents that are in the data file into it. That's all we're doing here. Uh, don't worry about this notation if you don't, want to, don't know what it means. All, all it's doing is turning these backslash ins into real new line characters instead of backslash in. Alright, so we have a variable that has the same content and the most common way that I see people try to connect, try to send the contents of a variable or any string or program to grep is through a pipe. Okay, that's what this symbol does. So they say, oh, we'll just echo it through a pipe and then run grep. And in fairness, this works. Unfortunately, it requires you to create a pipe, an anonymous pipe, and it requires you to fire up a second process, one to run the echo and one to run the grep. I have heard both ways that there are performance degradations for this and that it's sometimes it's actually faster to do this. Um, stylistically some people don't like this. Honestly guys, the only objective issue with this is that everything on the right hand side of a pipe becomes a subshell or a second process. In bash 4.3 I'm going to whisper this, there is a last pipe feature you can use as a shell option, but I really don't recommend it. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, here's where here strings come in. I don't want to have to call the echo program or the printf or anything else because I can just feed my string straight to grip by using the here string syntax, which is this triple less than. So I simply say grep, the word I'm looking for, and then the triple syntax here. And whatever string comes after it, is what will get connected to the standard input of the program that was started. In this case, grep is what's getting started. It's that simple, guys. I, instead of echoing it through, I simply connected the contents of this directly to the standard input of grep. This does have one other advantage. You'll notice up here, I didn't put my dash in. So echo is going to put in an extra new line. For this particular test, it's not a big deal but there are cases where this will bite you because there's an extra new line in it that you weren't expecting. The last way that I wanted to show you this is, you know, the, the string can be anything. So as, you, as soon as you use this here string syntax, you're saying connect whatever is the next token. So notice these spaces don't matter. Connect whatever is the next token to the standard input of the program that I'm calling. So even something like command substitution, which if you don't know what this syntax is, that's command substitution. We'll cover that later. We're going to take the contents of the data file and spit them out and store them in this string with command substitution and connect it to grep's standard input. Um, yes, this is a useless use of cat. There are better ways to do this, but this is just for education. All three of these ways are going to work the same. 
there you go. That's really all there is to it. Here strings allow you to take the contents of a variable or any string literal and make that the standard input for whatever program you want to use. This could be fed to Perl, this could be fed to Ruby, this could be fed to awk. You can put any program here you want that can read standard input. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like this, if it was helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you feel like I missed anything or if you just want to drop some good vibes, leave some comments, I appreciate that. Uh, when people have questions, please feel free to answer. I can't always get to all of them right away. Uh, also, subscribe. Helps me out. Helps me get these videos out there. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.